The clue here is what the angel says concerning him. That prince withstood him for about 21 days. The Bible says, Now when the adversaries of Judah and Benjamin heard that the children of the captivity builded the temple unto the Lord God of Israel, then came they to Zerubbabel and said unto him, Let us build with you, for we seek your God as ye do, and we do sacrifice unto him. Then the people of the land weaken the hands of the people of Judah and trouble them in building and hired counselors against them to frustrate their purpose all the days of Cyrus, king of Persia, even until the reign of Darius, king of Persia. Now, when the copy of King Artaxerxes' letter was read before Rehum and Shimshai the scribe and their companions, they went up in haste to Jerusalem unto the Jews and made them to cease by force and power. Isn't it interesting that the very same people who claim to be so supportive of Israel and the worship of his God were the very same people that did everything they could to prevent the Israelites from returning home to rebuild the temple and the city. Given everything that we've uncovered about the vision and the period of Daniel's fast, it should be clear that the history has a dual meaning. It would be a serious mistake to take this verse literally and not give an ear to what it's saying prophetically. While it may very well be true that there were certain people in the kingdom that didn't want Israel to return to Palestine and resettle the land, the much bigger picture is clearly what's being addressed here contextually and for good reason. The 21 days are the thing that was long, and now that Daniel is understanding the vision, God's point is that the repatriation of the Jews to Palestine is the covenant about to be fulfilled on two distinct levels. Therefore, preventing the rebuilding of the city and the temple would be the first step towards preventing the Messiah's first advent from being fulfilled. It would be imperative for Satan to do whatever it would take to keep that from happening. Secondly, the final fulfillment of the prophecy would be just as important, if not more, since the last day church would be doing the very same thing in a spiritual context. The worst possible scenario for Satan would be the church getting the final victory over him, as the prophecy states in Revelation 12. Now note carefully what Gabriel says about the exclusivity of the issue. The princes of Persia and Greece mentioned in verse 20 would refer to Cyrus and Alexander the Great. That means, historically, the words of the angel don't add up since neither one of the two were adversarial towards Israel. However, the timeline that they represent makes a whole lot of sense because Michael is Daniel's prince and Michael is always the name of the Son of God who would be actively engaged in doing battle with Satan. Therefore, Gabriel is really saying the princes of Persia and Greece who resisted the fulfillment of the promise is Satan, the prince of darkness. After 70 years, Israel would return to Palestine and rebuild the temple which he would have to try and prevent from happening. Consequently, 
Palestine would be resettled by the Samaritans who would fight to keep Israel from returning home and rebuilding the temple. For 400 years, Israel had not heard a word from the Lord. Antiochus would try to destroy the nation altogether by turning them into a Hellenistic nation of pagans and idolaters who would not serve or worship the God of their fathers. The two kingdoms would be the respective territories that the princes would rule over. What's significant about that is the record of history shows the greater kingdom would come up last since Alexander's kingdom would be much larger than Cyrus's. Furthermore, the prince of these two kingdoms would go from the temple being rebuilt under Cyrus to the temple and the nation being attacked, desecrated, and defiled during the reign of Alexander. This pattern of history is what Gabriel is referring to when he says, I will show thee that which is noted in the scripture of truth. The historical scenario that Gabriel is pointing to here is the prophecy of the end. From start to finish, the city and the temple are the New Jerusalem, while the city and the people being attacked by Antiochus would be the scenario that was first represented as the palace at Shushan because it was a reference to the book of Esther. Every part of the scenario that Gabriel is pointing to in Daniel 10 fits what Daniel was first shown in chapter 8 where Satan's plan of attack begins at the altar and culminates in the holy place where he will counterfeit the Passover and attack all those that will refuse to acknowledge him as the Messiah. The altar is the covenant with Abraham, which was God's promise concerning the land contract and the coming of the Messiah to Israel. Of course, Satan would resist that promise from being fulfilled because of what it would mean prophetically. All of this was represented in the symbolic kingdom of the Prince of Persia, since he would be the one that would fulfill the prophecy. The holy place, which would be a physical manifestation of Christ in symbol, would be the fulfillment of the prophecy concerning the Passover since Jesus would be the Lamb of God that it had always represented. That would be the part of the prophecy that would be represented as the kingdom of Greece because it was built during that period of history. The greater kingdom coming up last in chapter 10 is the greater horn coming up last in chapter 8. In both cases, the two represent something very traumatic. Every part of the scenario that Gabriel is referring to in Daniel 10 fits what Daniel first said in chapter 8 concerning Satan's plan of attack that begins at the altar and culminates in the holy place where he will counterfeit the Passover and try to destroy all those that will refuse to acknowledge him as the Messiah. And since the history does have a prophetic import, that would explain why Daniel would have the same experience twice. Daniel is representing two different people in two different contexts. First, he represents his own people who are the Jews historically and then he represents those that are the Jews spiritually. In both cases the pattern is the same which is another body of evidence that points to the coming of Antichrist in the person of Antiochus Epiphanes since he would be the one 
that would attack Israel during the time of Alexander's reign.